session. Uh, there's an intro session uh, online on, on YouTube, and we will do a, a brief overview of the fund itself. But Ivan's under time pressure, so I'm going to hand over immediately to Ivan. I'll introduce uh, Rodri and Emir later in the in the afternoon. But Ivan, thank you for joining us, and over to you. Thanks very much, Rick. Um, just checking, you can hear and see me because uh, um, I've, I've had to switch to. I was sorry, I'm a bit late. I, I, Zoom doesn't work very well from government laptops, uh, so I had to switch to a personal laptop, and uh, and I can't really see much um, uh, on 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 my screen. Um, and I'm also sort of coming in a little bit um, blind, I guess, in terms of um, what it is that I'm saying. And I think I'm here just to say, sort of say something generally about the strategic context and some of the changes post COVID about life sciences. Um, so um, I, I just want to, I, I guess, first um, flag that the UK government has today published a life sciences vision. This is a big, ambitious document. Um, and it builds on previous life sciences visions, life sciences sector deals, life sciences strategies, et cetera. But I think there are a couple of things in it that, that are um, significantly different. And I think they draw on the COVID experience. Um, and I'll just highlight a couple of those and then maybe come back to some of the things that I would see from our own experience of, of COVID response and maybe talk a little bit about digital and about innovation um, in, in the NHS um, generally. Um, so the two things that I think are really very different is that, is that data is much, much more prominent uh, across the life sciences vision than it's been before. The, the, sh the shift for life sciences, I feel, is moving from, from drugs and uh, access, so drugs are sometimes called technology in the health context, but, um, but from drugs very much towards medical technology or med tech, um, and that is devices, diagnostics, and digital, and the combination of the three of them. And I think that diagnostics and digital in particular um, are really, really very interesting areas. Um, so, so you will, most of you, many of you, I'm sure, will have seen the, the media discussion around um, access to data, which NHS England have been leading over the last couple of months. Um, data saves lives, or hashtag data saves lives, um, is, is the current motif for that campaign. There's a draft strategy which is out there, but um, I think there's an awareness following the way that data has been used for modeling in, in COVID. Um, but also, you know, building on things that many people have been discussing for some time um, that, um, th that we need to make more uh, applied use of data. Um, this is an area that Wales is really good at. Um, this, the sale database in Swansea is UK leading, very prominent partner in HDR UK, um, Data Research UK. Um, and we have um, uh, unusually comprehensive and um, high levels of coverage for uh, long term data. Um, spanning not just health and social care, but sometimes administrative data as well. So there are some real assets in our in our system there. Um, and I think the other bit is the UK um, really setting out a, a vision of how the NHS and healthcare services can be part of um, what I sometimes playfully call the Singapore on Thames strategy. So the sort of language that is used in the vision statement and in other things by UK ministers is very much around um, how the uh, United Kingdom as a global trading nation um, can be characterized by high technology innovation and life sciences and med tech is very much at the heart of that. Um, our effectiveness in, I mean, the UK now, our effectiveness in delivering um, vaccines, for example, um, is, is seen as a platform for this. Again, there's nothing new in this. This has been said for years about you know, how we can bring life sciences to bear. Um, uh, but I think it, you know, it's been dialed up even further. Um, so, I, you know, from a Welsh government perspective, it, wholly on board, there was a ministerial last week between the ministers of the four UK nations, chaired by Lord Bethel, who's, uh, who's the, sort of the lead UK minister for the life sciences vision, um, totally on board with the vision and the ambition and the opportunity that is there, but really keen to understand uh, exactly how um, the devolved administrations, as they're called in Whitehall, um, participate in that on equal terms as part of a wider levelling up agenda and very significant amounts of investment. And city deals, I think, are right at the heart of that. So the Cardiff City region is a partnership between UK government, Welsh government, local authorities in the region. Um, I, I think we'll see more of this kind of governance for combined um, cross-government working. Um, I just want to reflect on a couple of things in terms of, um, uh, in terms of our COVID response. So the, the first thing is that in, in, in many of the things that the UK government are highlighting as desirables or things to build on, I think the Welsh government has been very, very effective. Um, and, um, and some of those are, are, are digital. Um, two standout examples are contact tracing um, and vaccine delivery. So the contact tracing digital platform and the service that we have in Wales is, is structured very differently to test and trace in England. In England, 
they used um, uh, private providers for most of that delivery. Um, in, in Wales, we've used local authorities mainly, but also the NHS organisations. Um, in about, well, in 40 days, um, 40 actual days, not 40 working days, although they were all working days, even though they were on weekends, um, in May and June of last year, um, we, we, uh, we procured, commissioned, configured, tested and deployed an all Wales contact tracing platform, which is used by more than 30 organisations, all on a common data sharing platform, um, all on a cloud based platform, all using the same interf interfaces, all using the same data, data store repository. Um, that's that's given us consistently, you know, 90% plus follow up rates, significantly better than England. Um, and on a cost comparison, um, it's been delivered in Wales at a quarter of the price. So we're, we're at about, I think we're at about um, 25 pounds per case whereas in England is over £100 per case. Um, vaccine delivery, you'll have seen all the coverage about how well Wales has performed on vaccine delivery. It's the same supply, so with a population-based uh, level of supply of vaccine. Uh, we've got, again, an all-Wales digital platform. Um, it's, it's built from the childhood vaccination platform that we already had in Wales. It's called WIS, uh, the Welsh Immunisation System. Um, that's used in all our mass vaccination centres. It's available to GPs. The data is ubiquitous across everything. It's a single platform. Um, we, we've, we've gone faster, and we've got higher levels of vaccine take-up uh, for first and second uh, vaccine delivery very effectively. And then finally, on, 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 on PPE sourcing, um, again, you know, Wales was, was notably efficient through UK mutual aid arrangements. We, we, we provided more mutual aid into England than England provided to us. Um, and, and again, um, we procured more tightly and more effectively um, without you know, all, all the stuff that the National Audit Office is reporting about VIP lanes and other things that all applies to England. Wales procured separately um, and um, and avoided many of the problems um, because we've got a, a, a quite a tight procurement system. And we were, and, and in particular, I think the the surgical materials testing laboratory in Ben Coy, part of the NHS, that, that assesses quality of goods supplied um, uh, and basically audits the quality of goods supplied. I think is also a key part of that. Life Sciences Hub um, was also a very a very important part of that. Um, uh, that, that, that supply. So we've got you know, three examples, and, and there are others, of, of where, um, as specific parts of COVID pandemic, um, the Welsh NHS system and, and, and its partners, that means life sciences, that means industry supply chain, that means shared services procurement, that means local authorities, etc., um, have delivered faster, better, and notably cheaper than England. Um, and I think it's really important from Wales that we all have a, a common pitch through the city region, but into the life sciences vision and into Innovate UK and into the UK government, um, that, that if you want to build on the innovation that you've seen as part of the COVID pandemic, as part of your strategy for the next four to five years, then actually, you know, the Welsh system is a really good place to do that because um, we can evidence that we've um, that we've been, um, you know, faster, better, and much cheaper um, in terms of these new innovations that have been brought through. Um, so that all sounds wonderful. Um, um, there has to be a negative, and, and I'll stop, and I don't know whether there's sort of questions and answers, and I think I was only allowed sort of 10 minutes. Um, I, th I think the challenge for us is that the shift is very much from science to technology. Um, it, we've got some world-leading um, uh, areas in our universities. The emphasis historically for decades has been on, um, on how the NHS works with universities, on, on science, on discovery, on invention, on those things. And, we, we, can, we can deliver very compellingly on that. Um, we've got strong metrics in terms of impact through ref exercises in the past, um, and also um, about punching above our weight in terms of um, output and, uh, and journal references and various other things. But I think that they, um, if you like, the, the center of gravity is shifting from, from discovery science to implementation technology. Um, the vaccine task force model is used a lot as something that the UK government wants to emulate. Um, again, coming back to this, you know, notable success of the UK on vaccine, but um, vaccines it was not a science. The science had been done years before. Vaccine was a technology. Uh, the, the, the DNA sequence of the virus was sequenced within a week in China, shared globally in a transparent way. And within two to three weeks following that, we already had um, candidate um, um, uh, synthetic biology mRNA vaccines effectively. Um, and the, the six or seven months that followed was about the trialing and the validation and the testing of those. You know, this, this was not a science thing. Obviously science is the foundation for it, right? But this was about technology transfer on an extremely accelerated and gigantic scale basis in terms of the manufacturing process. Um, that, what, what that does, and Innovate UK have been signaling this as part of the industry strategy and the industry strategy challenge fund for the last three or four years, 
um, is, is that you need critical mass of industry uh, and you need industry partners. Life Sciences Vision is also really strong on, an, on venture capital, private equity, patient capital, um, and trying to stop um, UK companies being bought out by US investors and then basically lifted and shifted. Um, we don't do so well on, on that, right? So, so our, um, if our NHS is really good in terms of delivering things, can be really good, it isn't always, but can be really good in terms of delivering things very, very quickly and, if, and effectively and uh, efficiently, um, we probably don't have the same critical mass of industry um, and industry partners or venture capital and, um, and patient capital that, uh, that parts of England like the Golden Triangle have. So we need to get big quick. Um, and my main message is to you all through the challenge fund, I guess, and the city region um, is, is we have to think bold and we have to think ambitious and we have to think confident. As they say in Silicon Valley, you should behave like the business that you expect to be a year from now. Um, so so you know, we, we can't afford to be, we won't, we're not gonna get any special treatment, right? If, if, if we want to secure the opportunities for Wales and in Wales, and I genuinely believe that you know, Wales can absolutely smash it if we get the opportunity, but we've got to have to fight for that opportunity. Um, and, um, uh, and, and we're going to have to claim that recognition. So, so a really strong narrative, really strong story, very confidently expressed and consistently by all partners. I think that is a really important part of it. Um, but you know, you, if, if, if you want to succeed in a big way, then you've got to have the ambition to go in a big way and you've got to drive hard against that. Um, and then I will leave, it's football day to day, okay? And uh, there's going to be saturated England getting to the semi-finals and all that. Well, Wales did that four years ago, right? So Wales got to the semi-finals. Unfortunately, we were knocked out by Portugal, but there we are. Um, Wales got to the semi-finals four years ago, so we've been there, done that already. Um, there's nothing like the sort of coverage that England are getting now when Wales were in that position four years ago. Um, there's no point us crying into our spilt milk about not getting the attention that we feel that we deserve from the UK press, media, government, and all the rest of it. If we want it, we're going to have to stand up and get in people's faces in order to secure it. Um, but I do believe that it can be done. Um, the success of the Welsh football team that went from, I think, 118th in the global rankings six or seven years ago to Euro semi-finalists just goes to show how, how, you know, how these things can turn around very, very quickly. And finally, for those of you who are interested, um, there are companies in Wales right now doing this, but they're doing it largely under the radar and they do it under the radar because other parts don't keep up with them. Um, uh, so have a look at EKF Diagnostics headquartered in Penarth, uh, companies like Travis Health and Renalytics that they've created effectively that are now listed um, uh, on AIM. Uh, Renalytics is a 720 million pound company capitalized market cap at 720 million. All of that value created in the last three years in a company which is headquartered and led um, from, um, from Penarth, although partnering with Mount Sinai Health System in New York from a really small initial investment, but it's gone very, very, very quickly and very big. And the reason I'm flagging Renalytics is not just because EKF is based in, in Penarth, but because it is a company which blends digital with diagnostics. Um, it's, it's biomarkers for renal failure. Uh, which uses in, uh, some protected biomarkers, but also um, some artificial intelligence that analyzes those um, to provide um, actionable decision support information uh, for, for clinicians in the US system. And, and the more it does that, obviously, the bigger the patient base, the better the artificial intelligence gets, because the better it can tailor to the biomarkers and the other information that it sucks in. Um, and that is the space where we're going to see things. And I think it's a really good space for a company like Wells to be involved in, because uh, you can grow fast. In, in the digital world much, much more quickly than you can in the world of hard manufacturing, where you would need to tool up you know, a gigantic factory and recruit hundreds, if not thousands of people to manufacture and all the rest of it in digital, you can grow very, very quickly and you can create value very, very rapidly. So I'll, I'll leave, it at, leave it at that. Uh, hopefully, you know, that is kind of an, an inspirational over to you. I'm just off from the government, right? So um, or, I don't actually do anything. Uh, all of this stuff is done out there in the NHS, in industry, in academia, in universities, by clinicians and, and by others. The role of government is, is to, um, you know, we, we, we provide targeted funding, uh, we provide sort of authorization, license, direction, guidance, assurance and stuff like this, but the hard work is done at the front line. Um, and I know there's, a, there's an enormous amount that is already being done, um, but I think there are huge opportunities ahead of us for the next four to five years. Ciao.